Greetings, greetings, fellow stargazers. For the rest of this summer, the cosmos is offering a special treat in the southern heavens. Hi, my name is Kevin Wenzel with 2d6.org. Um, I'm talking about asteroids. It's a space-themed game where you play a pilot and you fly around uh, this area of space and you can either race or you can shoot objects. You can shoot targets on other asteroids or you can go and shoot drones that are shot from a turret on uh, different uh, large floating bodies. Um, the components of the game are wonderfully made. The, the cardboard asteroids themselves are great. Uh, there's a little cute little timer that comes with it that you can time your placement and it's a well-made game. Let's go ahead and take a look at the game and see uh, if it's something you may want to buy in the future. As you're setting up the game, you notice that a lot of the pieces are the same pod. And, uh, ooh, there we are. And on the other side, you can see that there is a, uh, an asteroid, a red asteroid. Um, a lot of these pieces are different. So one of the tricks that I learned is to always flip all the tiles over first with the... Uh, the pods down so you can see what's on the opposite side and that way you can sort out the ones you need and all the platforms you can take and push over to the side. Um, here's the layout for the race game. Uh, you can take your little ships and you can basically, these are the starting platforms and you can place your ships anywhere on these platforms. As you can see, a lot of times the asteroids tend to um, gather up in these regions of the map and, and they reduce the chances like almost 50% to 70% uh, going towards the walls like right here and they start to gather up or they'll gather up here. Later the maps have a lot of these uh, stationary viewing platforms um, and they form this cross pad in the middle and they actually gather up a lot of the asteroids and once those asteroids tend to get trapped in that area it's hard for them to get out of here. It might be a little bit easier for this map because it's not so restrictive because if there's um, one or two down this way they can actually flow through and keep going. So a lot of times towards the late, the late game asteroids tend to be gathered up in these corners and you can uh, have less difficulty flying. Initially um, when you first start playing you spend a lot of time uh, slamming the asteroids um, until you figure out how to work the the movement and I'll go through that in a few minutes but you can see uh, there's different kinds of asteroids there's um, red asteroids there's solid red there's solid white there's solid blue and it also is enhanced by the uh, dots on the asteroids themselves each one of these asteroids has a directional you can see uh, a one through six number represented on the asteroid so you roll these dice and the dice will tell you uh, what direction uh, the asteroids will go. But we'll get to that in a little bit. There's also um, combo asteroids. There's blue, white. You can tell by the dots on the, the, the asteroid. And there's also red, white asteroids. Also the platforms. Uh, there's a white platform, a red platform, and so on and forth. And they also move in different directions. So you have to take that in consideration. What's special about each one is the red ones tend to move farther. They move twice. White ones to simply move one direction. Blue move one direction, but they have this ability to push through whatever they hit, unless it's a stationary object. They can't push through the wall or push through a viewing platform or through a starting platform. But if they strike another asteroid, they'll certainly push it into space. So it's kind of interesting seeing that. We're going to roll the dice. You see that the red... Uh, was a six, uh, the blue was a two, and the white was a one, red, white, and blue, red, white, and blue, fix it. Um, so then you get a sense of how the asteroids are going to move on the board. You take a look. Uh, it's really difficult because the, the asteroids that move multiple directions for different colors, it's hard to figure out in the end, but you get a hang of it after a while. Um, you just kind of check out, you end up just checking the asteroids in your immediate vicinity. And then you're left with charting your ship movement. Now, what makes this game difficult? Well, let's just look at the card first and I'll go into that. You have one special move. This only can be used once 
the entire game, you can put your pilot token on your special ability. This one is he can move forward uh, twice. What's cool about the special ability is that um, you can replace one of your charted movements uh, one time during the entire game if it saves you and you can use your special ability. Now you have to decide what you're doing. Um, as you can see, the top row is shooting. If you're going to shoot at something, then you have to put your token up there. Um, the next row is moving forward one. The next row is, it's kind of difficult, it's a pivot and one move forward, and I'll show that on the board. Uh, this one is a, so it's pivot right, pivot left, and this one is a 180 degree turn. So you don't really move, it. you stay in your same position and you can kind of just spin 180 degrees. Uh, you can never um, turn off to the side in this way, but you can certainly turn reverse your direction completely. Uh, and it's handy when you're flying around the map because uh, because of this forward one movement, it's difficult to uh, line up a direct shot. You almost have to pass your target, turn around and fly back towards it. It's very rare that you uh, are lined up perfectly because uh, obstruction. So I'm gonna go ahead. I looked at the asteroids. I'm gonna go start charting my thing. Um, we actually have a timer and you kind of set just a generic rule of uh, how many, how much time you're gonna give each round, and I probably should have just, oops, how do you clear it, there we go. You have a timer and you can just give it uh, a minute, let's say that uh, each player has a minute to uh, determine the, their course of their ship. If the timer runs out, um, you can start it and you start going. If the timer runs out, then uh, you just stop at what point you are charting your, your course and that's all you get. So if I go ahead, I'm gonna move forward one, pivot left, uh, fire, forward one, pivot left, and then if I decide to, I'm just gonna go ahead and pivot right forward. And then my uh, final, uh, this is like uh, this red channel is auxiliary power. You can see that there's a shield symbol. If you want your shields up the whole turn, you have to use your energy for that. If you don't, and you think you need to use your energy for something else, you can put it over here. You could fire or do an alternative move, but then that makes your ship more susceptible to being hit or struck and taking more damage. Uh, if your shield's up, it reduces all collisions and damage by one. As you can see, I'm out of time, so I would have to start the match. This uh, final token down here represents your health. As, you, as it uh, shows here, you can have up to uh, six points of damage to your ship. <laughs> In conclusion, um, this game is going to appeal to a small group of people. Uh, if you're really into the space theme and you love the, the plotting of the course of the uh, spaceship and it's seeing if you can manage to miss all the asteroids, it's kind of, I can admit, there was a couple times where it was really satisfying when you finally just skirted and went around a couple of the asteroids. Um, but the problem is, is the game takes about 80% of the time you're moving all the asteroids and trying to figure out the stuff. Now, if this was on an iPad or some kind of video game or a Vassal program where it actually did all the movement for you, just pushed a button and all the asteroids moved, and you pushed another button and your ship moved, and you saw that you could get through it, then I would say this would be a great game because you're not spending all this time moving all this stuff. But a lot of times it just seems like you're doing work. You're moving the pieces. Now, if you like that, and that's the kind of game you want, then this is the game for you. I mean, there's a lot of great puzzle elements and you're trying to figure out stuff and you're moving. If you like that mechanical moving, then hey, that's your game. This is a great game. And for that reason alone, I think I'm going to have to drop it down a little bit in my rating system. If uh, you're not really into the theme, I would say this is more of a five or six, probably a five and a half. If this is your theme and you love all that mechanical elements, um, 
then maybe up higher, uh, six and a half, seven. Uh, a lot of comparisons to Robo Rally. It's not quite like Robo Rally. Once you're dead in this game, you're gone. You've been put on a, a spaceship craft and you're watching the rest of the events. You're out of the game. Um, you don't have limitations because you're not given cards. Actually, uh, you can keep changing up your movement as, uh, as many movements as you want until you run out of uh, time or the allotment on your card. So there's a lot of different factors than uh, Robo Rally, but uh, definitely a different game altogether. Um, I'm Kevin Wenzel for 2d6.org, and I say, keep playing.